What's up, y'all? It's what first thing come on the radio. Um, go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment. Let the diva know you stopped by. It's Tuesday. It is Tuesday, um, the 18th of June. What are we talking about today? Go, um, did I already tell you to like and subscribe? We are talking about, um, we are talking about Real Housewives of Potomac today. I need to dye my hair. Y'all didn't tell me I didn't, my hair was looking crazy yesterday. It was really looking crazy. My hair was really looking crazy. Y'all didn't even tell me. Not in the comments. Y'all so nice. Y'all should, somebody should at least send me an email and say, girl, what's going on with your hair? I hope y'all didn't think that was the look I was going for. <laughs> no, I need to dye my hair and cut it. It's too long. It is absolutely too long. If I could curl, if I could curl my hair in some rice, it's too long. Remember when that remember that used to be joke your mama's hair is so, so short she can curl her hair with rice? That was mean, mama. Your mama. Your mama jokes. Now the kids can't tell your mama jokes in school. They want everybody to get along, everybody get a participation trophy. Everybody stand up. Don't nobody 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 is singled out to be to be praised for accomplishing accomplishing something. We're creating a uh we're create it's weird because i guess i don't know maybe they're doing that because of the way social media works these kids they take the bullying from the playground they take it home and 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 maybe that's why they're in school they're just like we love all of you <laughs> all of you are great maybe that's what it is i don't know i i don't i'm not with the participation trophies and the kids don't like the participation trophies either they're like, I wish we would have got every, like, we won. We fucking won. Like, we want the fucking prize. You know what I'm saying? So, we talking about Real Housewives of Potomac. I watched it last night. I have, I was writing down all the damn shows I need to watch. I haven't watched Pose yet. I haven't, I did watch Queen Sugar. Are y'all watching Queen Sugar? Um, I'm not, it's, honey, we're, you know, I'm not, I won't, I don't know if I'm going to do a dedicate. Okay, for Queen, Queen Sugar. <sighs> I just want to know why the fuck Nova, she get on my fucking nerve. Nova is the one that gets on my nerves the most, but she's the one that it's like her intentions be good, but she's like real, very like, I don't know what it is. It is. And it's like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about Nova and her behavior is very like there's some it's like there's a difference i don't know what it is and i don't want to call it the character is being like aggressive but it's not aggressive it's not assertive it's almost like i'm all for the you know let's talk about what's really going on in this family like let's be honest right about our family and our family history i think i think that like okay Nova good like okay let's write let's tell the truth but one these opinions that you have about your sister and your and your brother how come they don't know these things about how come they don't know that you feel like that how come it's how come they find out that you feel this way about them and their story in their book in your book so it seems like it's like it almost seems like you're talking behind their backs when you put something in a book that you don't tell the person okay look i wrote a book and this is what it says i mean like ralph angel was so fucking mad because for a man to be like find out that the child is not a child he's been raising is not biologically his and he says okay i'm going to continue to help raise him and then for you to put in a book that he's not, I mean, like, girl, like, oh, but at the same time, you want to, folks need to know the truth. Now, to, should Ralph, should they tell that little boy at his age that Ralph Angel isn't his biological father? I think they should. I didn't find out for a long time my grandfather wasn't my biological grandfather. The whole time I thought that that nigga was mine. You heard me? 
I for a long time I didn't know that and then all of a sudden I was like what and I I knew this other grandpa but I was like I didn't know that the man that was the man I told you I lit a candle for for Father's Day I didn't know he wasn't my biological grandfather for a long time I think children should know I think you should just tell children the truth just tell them the truth just tell them the truth but anyway Nova, the way that she's going about this makes it seem like you're talking about behind your siblings' backs. And these opinions are so harsh. They're harsh truths, you know? And nobody wants to hear those harsh harsh truths. Nobody wants to hear those things, especially in our community. That's that's what's really good about this what their take with the story is because it's like we have like that's a grievance of mine. And I know a lot of people out there have grievances with their families because it's like why are y'all with all the secrets and shit? I don't get it. Why don't y'all tell the truth about our history so we fucking know who we are and where we came from? The good, the bad, the ugly, the tragedy, the everything. We should be a we should know. We should be we should be armored with that walking through life. When you have secrets and family secrets and everybody is nobody's telling the truth about nothing, you leave your you leave your tribe without their fucking armor. Period. You need to armor your family up and with oh, which history is your armor. You got to know your fucking history. And I, that's why I'm like, I'm glad Nova's coming out and be like, this is what the truth is. They don't want to hear the harsh truths. This is what we're going to talk about. But at the same time, you didn't tell your brothers and sisters how you felt about their situation beforehand. So it looks like you're talking behind their back, Nova. That's all I got to say about Queen Sugar. So we're going to see. We gonna see. And is somebody sleeping with a white? Oh no, he's Latino, huh? She's sleeping with a Latino dude. They seem to be getting along. Okay, whatever. Um, Ralph Angel, what's going on with him? He's off of parole or probation or whatever. Remember, I told y'all I don't know the difference. Um, parole. Probation is when you're done with your sentence and you have like a time left over. And parole is like you still under the state's. You still a property of the state until your parole is over but you're let out is that what it is okay that's about queen sugar now we can talk about real housewives of potomac monique's rainbow party that was very cute it was so cute it was really i mean i didn't get to see i mean i think the idea is cute the decorations they look very basic and regular and that's fine whatever um but for her to be moving around and and doing all that stuff while she's pregnant it's it's i'm sure she's very fucking tired um but chris with his chauvinistic ass i don't know what all i don't know what's going on i ain't did nothing i mean he's letting everybody know that he's like a you you're only like it's it's a shame to be like proud that your only position is like here's the money like that's what you proud of i don't know what's going on here shut up chris he's so chauvinistic i didn't do nothing i don't know i don't know i don't know why i mean she did everything crazy that nigga is crazy ashley um ashley arrives to the rainbow party the mother-in-law is there um monique's mother-in-law is there she gets the microphone they do a little toast or whatever she gets the microphone i was like oh shit what the fuck is she gonna say so she apologizes to monique for calling her a heifer on television i don't like a little old ladies like that i just don't i just don't like little old ladies like that yes you deserve respect but you do not get to talk shit to people you do not get to talk shit to people and say whatever you want to say and then say but you need to respect me if you call me on it it's disrespectful if you call me on my bullshit if you call me on my behavior as an elder I'm going to tell you to stop it because you're being disrespectful. So you're infallible. You cannot be corrected. And there's no humility there. You're, you're, you're not humble at all. What you say is your word and you can talk slick to people. Monique was like, no, you can't. You can't do that. Well, that's my son. And that's the shit that I don't like. That's my, you think your son is about to be on your side? She was like, that's my son. He knows me. Yes, your son knows that you're a nice, nasty little old lady who hides behind religion to get your, to get your little slick comments off. Because when she said he knows what I'm talking about, he, both of them at the same time said, no, I don't. No, he don't. 
Bitch, no, we don't know. We're not doing this. This is a new era. This is 2000 fucking 20. We're not allowing elders to talk slick without telling them. And she told her respectfully. You do say when she said slick, that is what that's what happened. She said slick. And that is really what since she was like, oh, hold on. She's saying that what I'm saying to her is like she didn't like when she said slick. You do be saying some slick shit. And then it's not meant to be nice. She didn't have nothing to say. Because she knows what the fuck she's doing. But God knows my heart. That's just who I am. No, lady. Well, just, just who you are is a character flaw. And you are not allowed to talk to people like that. Too bad you have to be raised again as an old motherfucking lady. But we're telling you this now today, little old lady. We don't allow elders to talk slick to people without telling them or correcting their behavior. You get it? shit fuck out of here with that shit you gonna talk slick to her call her a heifer and oh i got that heifer toe didn't i come on now come on now you apologize but then you want to turn around and say that's just who you are that's it, it's unacceptable yes you can be just that but it's unacceptable motherfuckers ain't accepting that shit karen was there ashley gets on the microphone at the party and I'm with Candace. Even though Candace was being hella shady the whole fucking episode, misconstruing um, things that were said by um, Monique to Giselle, saying that Can um, Katie looked like Amistad, and then Candace—I mean Giselle—took totally misinterpreted. It. First of all, I didn't understand what fucking Monique meant in the first place. So I was like, why is she? What does she mean by that? Amistad. There's she's gonna Amistad her. I'm like, well, she's Amistad set us free. I was like, okay, I don't get I don't get what she means. Somebody on Twitter actually explained it. So then when when the somebody on Twitter was like, well, maybe she's like, I'm a free spirit, like I've been released from captivity. That's how free I am. Amistad set us free. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Cause I was like, I didn't, I didn't understand what the fuck Monique was talking about anyway. I could see it. I didn't, but I didn't, I didn't interpret it the way that what's her name was interpreted in it, like calling um, uh, Katie a slave. Um, I didn't, and so Giselle took offense to that. And Giselle is her and that cancer. They, I, you know, I don't know what they're gonna do with them this season, but we're gonna see. So Candace gets on, not Candace, uh, Ashley gets on the microphone. No tears, just. I'm like Candace. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I felt like. Have you ever seen Wedding Crashers? Where or like even fucking. What's his name? Going to the barbecue on Poetic Justice. What are you doing here? You are an imposter. You don't belong here, lady. That is what Ashley seems like to me. Like you're an imposter. Like whatever you're saying right here, this is fake. All of this is fake. This is a story somebody told you to say. Like it's fake. I was like, I'm not. I'm not buying it. Michael, however, I was shocked because I was like, Michael seems very emotional about this, and I'm like. Is he emotional? Like, does he want to? He, he's acting like he wants a child. Ashley convinced him, like, we want a child. Like, he's 60 years old. And um, Karen is telling her, you know, well, Ray was this. You know, I gave Ray his only child. But, and, and Michael seems to be very active. Like, I don't think there's an issue with his fragility in terms of his physical. Because he seems to be very active, honey. So he was emotional. Um, Michael was really emotional. Did y'all catch that? Because I was like, okay, so maybe he really wants this baby. Or, I mean, I don't know. Did I ever think he didn't want the baby? I don't know. But I think it's all a scam. I still think Ashley and her mother are scam artists. I really do. Ashley is 31 with a 59-year-old man, 60-year-old man trying to have a baby um, the baby is going to be 10 years old. You're going to have a 70 year old dad. Is, is he's really 60 years old? <laughs> Bitch. That's crazy. Even my son was like, why is she with that really old man? I was like, right. <laughs> right. Even a little kid can see like that don't even make, that don't even go. That don't even look right. She looks like she's with her father. Crazy. 
and Robin, they showed a clip of Robin asking Ashley, was he gay? And no, he's not gay. And Ashley answered just right, bitch. You should have asked the right question. That's what happened, y'all motherfuckers. Don't be asking the right question. Is Michael bisexual? Is Michael fluid? Is my Does Michael open to, is, is he pan? What the fuck? Like, what's going on? You ask, you asking, is he gay? No, he's not gay because he, he likes women and he likes clearly likes men. He was I was in the kitchen doing something and Michael they were at the party and Mike I could overhear Michael tell somebody that some man they had a nice shirt on. I said Michael loves giving the men compliments. And I said, well he likes men. He's what he's looking at he's looking at men. You know what I mean? It was like um Michael he's he honey I think he was talking about Juan. Who y'all think he was talking about? Cause I that's who I do. <laughs> that's who I'll be talking about. That he's talking. He has to be talking about Juan. I always thought from the beginning that he was talking about Juan. Um, I didn't know who else he was talking. Who else he could have been talking about? Yeah, Ashley on the microphone. That was hella fake. Karen and Ashley. They she you know Karen says I'm not a phony. I'm not a phony. Yes you are. Yes you are, lady. You are phony. That's why you was closed off when you went into that salt room. You're phony. And and, and you know what? I, when they went into that salt room, Ashley was like, come on, you know, I really want to, you know, let's meet and, you know, let's get our, our relationship together or whatever. And you go into this room, this media, this lady is cleansing your energy. You don't believe it. You have, you do not believe it. Even Ashley was like, okay, you got to be open. And I was like, look at Karen. She's so phony and fake. But then the woman says, I'm also a medium and your father is standing right here. You, you see, you took your ashy ass in that salt room, you fucking bitch, and was closed minded and even being disrespectful. And then you lucky that your father came through. I was like, see, that's that's what you fucking get. That's what you fucking get. You sitting there being closed minded, sitting there be trying to be funny about some real shit and this woman is sitting here telling you oh i'm a medium too and your dad is here boo now all of a sudden you a believer bitch oh i was like oh karen that's what you getting you lucky that lady wasn't see that's why it's important like if i was that if i was karen i would get in, i would keep in contact with that woman because that woman based on Karen's behavior of being close-minded she didn't have to tell her that her dad was coming through but that's how you know that lady was a real medium and was really a messenger because you send in messages and you don't have any it's not your responsibility to determine what to say and what not to say to someone but if Karen if that lady was a different kind of person and wasn't really a nice person she wouldn't have told Karen that her father was right there and based on the way that Karen was acting I'm sure that I mean like that's how you know that woman was a real real messenger because she just like okay you over here laughing and shit but bitch your dad is standing right here now what what else you got to say you got anything else to say now you crying and shit and talking to his ass girl bye shut up Karen you phony bitch now Ashley I'm not funny I'm not funny. Giselle and her mom, they meet. Giselle's mother did not want to talk about her daddy, honey. They was married 35 years and got a divorce. Why? I need to know why. Maybe they stood stood together for the children. And that's and and now that I don't even want to talk. Her mother was like, I don't <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to even talk about it. Go on with your story, you and your daddy. Go on with your story, girl. I don't even want to talk about it. I wonder what the fuck happened. It was probably a situation where they stayed together for the kids. Probably so. Because who gets divorced after 35 years? Like, that's a long fucking time to be married and then all of a sudden be like, Ugh, I don't like you. But can you see Giselle got in there? My mom throws shade, but not like Dorothy. And then they showed Dorothy like the way that um, every time I see that lady, every time I see that lady, I'm like, oh, why is that lady on the screen? We're going to see. I guess Candace's mom hits her. bitch, And it's like Candace is fighting. I told y'all last season 
we was gonna watch her try to wean herself from her mother she talking about this is my life and I, I need to hear I need to know what the fuck is going on her mother hit her with her pocketbook <laughs> What did you do, Candace? And then, Candace, you are acting like a little girl. That's that's the thing. It's like because that's where she stunted, like on some real shit. That's where she stunted. That's why she behaves in that way. That's and then somebody said, why does Candace feel like she needs to nitpick at Ashley all the time? That's what somebody said on Twitter. And like, what is her thing with Ashley? I think that when you are around somebody and you know them a little bit and you know and you can feel fraud you can feel fraudulent activity and I think that that is I think that that's what Candace feels when she's around Ashley and for someone with the emotional intelligence that Candace has and I'm not saying anything bad about Candace because a lot of us are stunted in spaces in places in terms of our childhood based on our relationships with our parents and how we dealt with our parents and emotionally some of us are, are at different places when when different things trigger us I think that because of where Candace is in her emotional intelligence that she cannot not say anything around Ashley like you I gotta let you know that I know you fake like that's it I, and I understand that because sometimes you get around people and you're like okay I need to get away from you because you fake and I'm gonna say something you I don't know if you have you've ever had that experience where you've been around somebody and it's like okay you you your, your whole energy is off your spirit is fucking off and I can see it and I need to go away because I'm going to say something. You, I'll, think, I, I'll think about it long enough that I'll end up saying it like, okay, this shit. And that is what's going on to me in my theory is what's going on with Candace and Ashley. And Candace is very much a child in, these, in this relationship with Ashley. It's like a nitpicky, kind of messy, you know, mean girls type of behavior. Both of them are doing it to each other. And I don't know what it is like all of the sympathy that Ashley wants for having a miscarriage when last year the way she was acting and just like Monique said when you live a little you start becoming compassionate because you get to experience some things that you haven't experienced so now you're now you you learn compassion once you start experiencing those things and that and unfortunately for some people they don't have that compassion or empathy to talk towards people to where they don't really have to go through what you're going through or have been through what you've been through to understand what you're going through but some people are so self-absorbed they don't get it until it happens to them and then they want all of the you know the, the the compassion and love that they weren't even able to demonstrate when somebody asked them to, to for that for that support and fuck Ashley that Ashley is phony and I'm with and I know that Candace is acting like a bitch to her but I'm with her bitch you phony and I can't not say anything I'm like bitch you phony and I gotta let you know like I, I really like understand where Candace is coming from like girl I'm rolling my eyes and everything I'm going to let you know that I know that you're lying and you're going to get mad at me because you want to be able to project this false self to everybody but bitch I see you I fucking see you and that's what it is <laughs> we see each other <laughs> we see each other uh, Monique's house you sound oh you should know me say whatever they want I should be able to say whatever I want that's what the mama said. No, no, you can't. <laughs> what the fuck? Who the fuck do you think you are, lady? Yes, ma'am. You can say whatever you want, elder. But you cannot be disrespectful. And you cannot cloak it in, in religion and say, well, you know, you know my heart and God knows my heart. When 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 uh, Chris's mother said to Ashley, I'm not an alcoholic. I don't drink. I slid off the couch. That all that judgmental shit. That all that shit. Like you a little old lady with you got your little prayer cloth out at all times, but you hella nasty and hella rude. And you don't think nobody can say nothing to you because you old and broke down. But guess what? It's a new motherfucking day, bitch. And and I'm glad that Monique's husband is stupid ass because there's some men that will not check their mother or will not let their mother know like. Uh -uh, I don't agree with that and I'm gonna say it right here in front of everybody I'm gonna say I don't agree with that and you're not gonna tell me 
that I'm being disrespectful because I don't agree with you. And that's a problem that black parents have. You think because I don't agree with you, I'm being disrespectful, I have a different opinion. What your, your word is not, it's not set in stone. You're, you're, what you're saying, like that's the thing. There's no, when I say humility, that everything they say, they believe it's, it's that's what it is. That's, that's word. And it's not. And so now you have adults, other adults around you, and you feel like they need to respect what you say, and what you're saying is some, some foul shit. We're not doing that no more. It's a new day. This goes out with Giselle. They go to Chris's, um, oh, his name is Chris too. They go to Chris's restaurant. That, I want to try that, that, what was it, tri-tip or ribeye mac, or ribeye mac and mac and cheese? Oh my God. It didn't look I couldn't see what it looked like, but it sounds good. I was like, ooh. Um, Chris is gonna come out with a cookbook, so they're gonna have like a tasting party for the recipes that are gonna be in the book. That's that's gonna be a cute little thing. But they kept showing clips from what's gonna happen throughout the season. And it looks like Giselle and Karen get into it. They're frenemies, and we're just gonna we're not gonna even try to, you know, analyze it. It it is what it is. That is exactly what they're frenemies, they're not gonna get along. They don't like each other, um, and that's what it is. They don't like each other. Their personalities just don't match. I, and, the, and that has been the theme with Giselle and Karen from the beginning because on the first season, I was like, okay, so are they going to fight trying to see who's going to be the queen of the show? Remember how they were all about the etiquette and, and like really posturing for these cameras? Remember that? And I felt like Giselle and Karen have been fighting for to have the attention of the show and both of them are, are equally the stars of the show i'll give it to giselle and karen both of them are really like you know the main type of girls i guess the main girls i'm not the word on the street i'm the word on the street remember that oh candace is telling giselle a bunch of wrong shit just wrong like J candace that's how you know it's like she doesn't have anything to talk about she's talking about these women and she's telling she's talking about the rainbow party um giselle gets upset because of what candace tells her that monique said and she interprets it the wrong way so now giselle, giselle is mad for no reason really giselle is mad for no reason oh robin in these properties child does robin and her mother know what they're doing right no they don't they don't what is going on like what and i was gonna say you know i wouldn't trust robin with money because of the bad investment but it wasn't her fault that man scammed them that that it was it was her fault it, i mean that wasn't something how could she have controlled that you know what i mean and then i know people want to say well you can't really trust robin with the money and this and that because of what she did with the investment I just, I, you know, I just think that that's not, that's not something that you can really say, like, people make bad investments every day, and, and then, unfortunately, this just happened to be their friend, he scammed them, and then killed himself, so that's not Robin's fault, I know she feels bad, because she gave the nigga their life savings, she trusted him to give him the life savings, but that's not her fault that he did that, that's not her fault, people make bad investments all the time, all the time, what else happened? Oh, what else? What about the boy from Parkland? The the Parkland survivor. He was caught on tape calling people niggers, nigger jocks. Nigger jocks. Calling people niggers. Harvard rescinded his application. You are no longer able to come to this school, my friend. They're upset because it's like the Republicans are like, we say nigger all the time in private. And then the boy, he's tweeting everything on, putting everything on Twitter, talking about, well, Harvard has a checkered past. They have slave owners and da da da, da. Harvard's still like, okay, so what? You're not going to be part of the future or the past, nigga. Now, nigga, now. You really thought your privilege was going to get you something. I said, that's something because you got privilege and you got a tragedy. You really thought because you, you were, you was a student at Parkland, you was a student at Parkland on social media saying nigger no we don't want you now and and just like that just like the people are saying oh we say nigger in private okay 
but we're able to see you on social media saying nigger and we don't want that now whether or not we've had a checkered past you will not be part of it or the future or an alumni sorry we're not doing that it's a new day <laughs> it's a motherfucking new day you thought privilege privilege and tragedy was gonna get you into harvard no my dear no my dear we're gonna take your we're gonna rescind your uh what you call it your application sorry oh i made it to work in time i left right on time two minutes Anyways, I'm here, y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. <sighs> I gotta watch a bunch of... I gotta watch polls. I gotta watch Love and Hip Hop uh, Atlanta. I was writing down all the shows I gotta watch. I don't know how Bondi Blue... Shout out to Bondi Blue. I don't know, bitch. I don't know how you do it. She be sitting in front of the camera all the time. Every show. And she dedicates a video to every show. I don't... <sighs> She's a kind of the, she's she 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 got it. But she did quit her job though. She did quit her job. That, look at that Minnie Cooper. That is so cute. She did quit her job though. But shout out to her. I love her. She's so cute. I love her accent. I love it. I love a New Orleans accent. Anyways, y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day. Shout out to y'all. Have a wonderful day. Take care of each other. Um, I'll see y'all in the comments. Peace. <laughs> Thank you. You need to leave? No, bitch. Okay. Oh, he's yeah. Out. Yeah, he's out.